All right, remember to silence your cell phones, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. For Wright State, the student athletes are Tanner Holden and Tim Finke. And we'll begin with an opening statement from head coach Scott Nagy. Well, we, you know, I think our, our game plan was good. We had to hope, we had to, honestly, we had to hope that they missed some shots that, that they made. Um, you know, in, in terms of how hard our kids played and, and not giving in, I think all that stuff was great. We, I, I think we had uh, the at least two times and maybe three times down eight. You know, and then <laughs> they hit a three that goes 55 feet in the air and goes through the basket, and that was very discouraging for sure. Uh, but you know, we we just we, we had to play tight, and I think we did that. In terms of our defense, had to be tight. We forced them into a lot of turnovers, but we had we just had to hope they missed more shots, and they shot the ball well. And so you just got to tip your cap. And and uh, but I think the game plan was right for our guys. And and so, but we're, obviously we're very proud of them. Questions for the student athletes. One for Tanner, um, Jay Posner with the Union Tribune in San Diego. The other night, you had a fantastic game. Tonight, it seemed like you struggled to find some shots at times and to really get going was it something they were doing no no nothing that they were doing uh you know uh just a different different game you know tim was on tonight uh and you know uh everyone has a game where they get they get a lot of points they're, they're hitting shots so uh for me i'm not just a scorer you know coach always talked to me about like if you're just a scorer if you're not scoring then you can't contribute anything else to the team uh you know for me i, I take pride in that i don't want to be the guy who if i if i'm not scoring then i'm useless on the floor uh, so I was definitely trying, you know, uh, defensively step up. You know, I had a few miscues, uh, and I talked to my team about that. You know, coaches hold me accountable. Uh, but, you know, offensively, offense comes and goes. If you're not playing your best on the defensive end, then uh, especially things like that tonight, uh, you get scored on and things like that. So. Yeah, Tom Archdeacon, Dayton. Uh, Tim, you were real active right from the get-go, and a couple of their players commended you on it when they were in here. Just uh, the kind of the mindset you took to it, both uh, banging around with the big guys in there, trying to steal the ball and, and shooting. Yeah, I knew uh, you know it would be a, a challenge, obviously, to just come in here, but having to guard their big guys, I think it was just um, a mindset from the from the get-go, trying to just be physical and, and get around them and try to get the steals like we did. Um, I think we forced them into quite a few turnovers. So, I mean, we did a good job um, with that. And it was just, like Coach said, they were hitting tonight. And so, well, that's what it was. Austin from Mid Major Madness. This is for both either Tim or Tanner. Um, how has this whole March Madness experience from the first four game against Bryant and just pushing Arizona's to brink? You guys had it within 10 points in the second half. What does this do for you guys experience wise coming back? You guys have another year of eligibility next year as far as this experience in building the program and what can you take away from this? Uh, you know, like like we always said, uh, this is just a stepping stone. You know, we're not here just for the experience. We're here to win. We're here to make a name for us uh, and our program. Uh, so this is definitely just a step uh, in the right direction. Uh, you know, we were in this game. Uh, you know, we made our run. Uh, you know, they hit some hit some shots. Uh, you got to tip your cap to them. Uh, but you know, this is just a, this is just this, this is just the start of it. Uh, and I think we're going to do a great job. You know, in the off season. Uh, working on our weaknesses, uh, sticking together, uh, and you know we're gonna get back to this point and hopefully win some more games. Yeah, Tom Orsig and Dayton again for both you guys. Just dealing with their size, what was that like in there trying to get a shot off and, and or trying to rebound against them? Yeah, well, like especially late in the game, I got my my shot tipped twice, I think, and the length. That's something. I mean, we don't see to that extent in our in our league, so it was something that I had to kind of adjust to and and, and figure out, but. But you know, I, I think it was a fun challenge. Um, and like Tanner said, it's something, you know, we're not just coming here to have fun. I think just with going forward, it's, it's something that we, we want to build on, like truly build on and, and, and just get better at. Tanner, you want that one as well? Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, they have a lot of length. Uh, it definitely helps their advantage. You know, they can, they can rake in the gaps and, you know, just, they're kind of everywhere. Uh, but I thought we did a great job, you know, we only had six six turnovers. Uh, you know, as the Horizon League school going against one of the top teams in this tournament, you know, picked to win uh, in a lot of a lot of brackets. Uh, and I felt like we did a great job. You know, uh, six turnovers is going to win you a lot of games. You know, we just didn't hit shots tonight. 
James Ryder, WHIO. Tim, uh, Tanner kind of touched on it, but for you, when do you think you'll allow yourself to start thinking about next year? I know this is a bitter feeling right now, but it has to make you that much hungrier when you've had the success, especially late in the season that you guys have had. Yeah, well, for me, I, when I'm focused on something, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I got blinders on, so I'm, I'm all in that. And so now with it being over, obviously I'll take a, probably a week or two and just, just relax and, and kind of get my mind completely off of it. And, and then, you know, I'll go from there and listen to myself and pray about it and we'll see what, I, what I'm doing. And, you know, it's something that I'm excited with this team. You know, we had a great, great, especially second half of the year. And so it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. James Rodgers, I agree. Tanner, an emotional day for you compared to everybody else. Can you just kind of talk to me about what the emotions of this day were for for you with everything going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was emotional in a way. Uh, you know, it, it's my grandfather's birthday today. Uh, it's first birthday in heaven, uh, so you know it was a big day. Uh, you know, family, uh, they're all here tonight, so it was definitely a emotional day. But I felt like you know I have guys in this locker room who, who care about me and love me uh, you know we have great faculty who all support us uh, and you know it's definitely been a you know the grieving process for all of us and all of our different situations has been tough uh, but I feel like that's what we can you know bounce things off of we can we can uh, you know really reflect and talk about those things we can have those serious conversations because we have a lot of people on our team going through the same situation like you don't you're not alone uh, you know it's just a great great atmosphere that we have here at Wright State uh, and, you know, like Tim said, we're going to just keep building on it. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited uh, for the future. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy that I chose Wright State. Yeah, Tom Archdeacon again. Hey, Tanner, did you also uh, tweak your ankle or something? What, what happened in the first half there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had tweaked my ankle. Uh, you know, it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, and I did in the Bryant game. Uh, and, you know, I've been working with our trainer uh, to get 100%. But, uh, you know, with these quick turnarounds, it's kind of hard. Uh, you know, you don't have all your facilities uh, and all the all the things you have back at, like, the physicians, thing like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, just had to switch shoes, get some more ankle, uh, tape on my ankle, and I had to go back out there and play. Any other questions for the student athletes? One, one final one up here. I know you say you're not coming for the fun and all like this, but what are you going to remember of you know, this is you, you played two games in the NCAA tournament. You you won one. You you got there's got to be some good memories here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, being in March Madness is a special thing. Uh, but I don't think it's the March Madness that I'm gonna remember so much. It's it's all the things that we went through off the court uh, that have brought us closer together. Uh, and you know, whenever you go through those things, you know, we had a lot of times where we could splinter, we could end the season, we could check out mentally. Uh, but I thought we all did a great job of, of coming together. Uh, being a family and you know coach talks about it all the time uh, you know people go through adversity on the court but at the end of the day if you're not going through adversity off the court you're really not I think we're, we're, we're more of a band of brothers honestly uh, I feel like you know a lot of teams just have that on the court adversity but we really face life uh, and, you know we got tackled by a lot of obstacles that we that we broke through uh, and we fought through uh, and you know this season is the epitome of that we had a lot of games where we were down double-digit points, uh, you know, come back from that. And I don't think if we go through things off the court that we ha would have been able to do that. Thank you to the student athletes. We'll let you go and continue the questions for Coach Nagy. James Ryder, WHIO. Coach, for you, I mean, what, what does this do for your confidence in this team moving forward to the next season after all the success you had and so many of these guys coming back to keep this group together? It, it doesn't change now. Like what I talked about the guys this year was trying to be a, an at-large team. Now, we obviously the, the, the start that we got off to was so bad that we had no chance of doing that. Uh, but that'll be how I talk to them about it again next year. It doesn't change anything. I think we'll be more suited for it next year. Uh, uh, you know, starting this year, Learn how to play without Loudon was, uh, you know, we just weren't prepared. Plus, I wasn't prepared. Like, you know, I've said this before, going through my father's death, I wasn't in a very good spot early. Uh, but but we, we, we'll we be in a great spot next year in terms of uh, the uh, uh, we'll, be, we'll be deeper and obviously extremely experienced. And, and so, you know, we, we'll have a good team for sure. 
Yeah, Tom Archie and Dayton. Scott, talk a little bit about Finky's game. He he took it to him right from the start. No, I mean, he was your he was your one guy that really. Yeah. Some other guys came on. But well, he, we you know I think that 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 early, Tim and Trey played like like they they were there from the start. Uh, you know, the first ten minutes we just didn't we weren't very good and that's really what cost us the game. After that we started to play. It's like, okay, now now we get it. Now we understand and uh, we're just playing with these guys. But the first ten just weren't very good. But but Tim, yeah, got off you know, he was ready to go from the start, you know, and I've said this all year that, that really you know, if you look at the stats and you just work down it, you're not gonna say it, but our team knows that, that Tim is our is our M V P. He's our He's the guy we leaned on the most, uh, the most steady, the the best defender for sure, and uh, uh, you know just just proud of him and happy for him too. Uh, Coach Austin from Major Madness, can you just talk about the growth of, of Tim and Trey? They've been playing their best ball t- over the course of the last month. Uh, can you just talk about just their development at the end of this year? Tim and who? Uh, Trey Calvin. Yeah, yeah, uh, both of them. You know. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, Tim's been pretty steady all year. He just has been. That's just his personality anyway. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we were obviously very disappointed when he didn't make the all-defensive team in our league, which, in my opinion, is kind of a joke. But, you know, again, you, people just go look at stats, steals and blocks and all of that stuff, and so you just vote on that stuff. And, you know, Tim doesn't necessarily lead in that stuff, but but he takes everybody's – best player every night and it doesn't matter what position they are if they're point guard or the center I mean he'll guard them and and he's so steady and if, if he's you know he's unlike most players in that if he's struggling offensively it does not affect his defense most guys if they struggle offensively it affects their energy on the defensive end they they mope around they you know they they don't like what's going on, on the offensive end Tim never lets it affect him and then you know Trey Trey has just been tremendous and, and he obviously had a very, very good first half today. And, uh, but, but I think with Trey tonight, I think him being ill these past two days kind of caught up to him there uh, in the second half. And we, we played him, uh, well, yeah, 30, 30, almost 39 minutes. And so that wasn't easy for him. Now, he was feeling better. But, uh, you know, I mean, throwing up for two days, it, it, it takes its toll on you. But he's had this uh, uh, the second half of the season. He's been tremendous, uh, tremendous ball handler. Can get his shot on anybody. Highly efficient offensive player. Our best shooter, and uh, uh, you know, a tremendous defender too for his size. He's got quick hands. So he had the second half of the season. You know, and I think probably you know when you look at Tanner and Grant and those guys coming back with with the the confidence that Trey has now. I mean, you know, he, he's going to be hard to deal with. James Rucker, WHIO. Coach, obviously a bitter loss, but a really cool moment there at the end when TJ yeah. made his free throw. What, what was that like for you, and I, did you say anything to him? No, I, you know, I was happy for him. I mean, this is it for him. He, he graduated in three years. I'm proud of him. He's been a great teammate. And, uh, I mean, when he got that ball, he took off. I was like, what's he doing? What's he doing? And so, I, you know, I'm happy for him. It's the first point he scored all year, and, and it's the last one of his career. But, you know, he'll always get to say he scored a point in the NCAA tournament. So, as a dad, I'm happy for him. Scott, when you uh, brought Holden out a couple times early in the first half, to sat him down just a little bit, was that just to calm him down yeah. emotionally, or was it – because of his injury, or, or or just to kind of get mostly him in the just flow. to calm him down, calm him down. I mean, we we've been through that, and I, I talked to him about it yesterday. You know, coming off a thirty-seven point game where it, everything just flowed naturally for him, and part of it was they zoned, and, and Tanner just sat in the middle of that zone and got a bunch of easy shots, and and you know Arizona plays man to man and puts a guy three or four inches taller, it ma- makes it more difficult. But I told him yesterday just. You've got to let that stuff come naturally. You can't think, you know, with all the attention you got from scoring 37 points that, you know, you have to maintain that and keep that up. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes kids feel pressure to do that, that, you know, you got you to gotta back that stuff up. And uh, so I, I just felt like he was playing tight in the first half. Second half, he started to play. You know, he, he loosened up. He relaxed. He started cutting. Uh, you know, he made a – he made. A, Grant kicked it out one time, and he drove immediately and made a great pass. I mean, he just started playing. I'm saying, okay, now he's playing. Now he's back to Tanner. 
uh, Coach Austin again from In Major Madness. When you guys cut it to eight in the second half after that first media timeout, and the and the rest of the crowd, the TCU and the CTL fans were starting to get behind you, what was that like? I know you're probably busy coaching, but yeah, just to have the number one team, number one seed on their heels, what was that like? I mean, uh, it, it's great. We didn't win the game. It's you know, we, but but what was nice for me is in the timeout, I just looked at players and I, all I said was, hey, and they all shook their head like, oh, yeah, we got it, coach. We know now. I mean, we can play. And and so that that was a good moment for me because I didn't I didn't have to say anything. All of a sudden they were excited. And, you know, like I say, when that three when that three hit the back of the rim and went way up in the air and it's just like you have to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, what do we have to do? Uh, I think that was very discouraging. We had and we had the ball two or three times down eight, and just you know, I mean, they're tough to score on because they're so big. Final question for Coach. Coach, you know, with what's going on with Tanner, with what today is, did you say anything to him? I mean, especially with this season being about handling emotions and trying to deal with that. I mean, did you have any conversation with him going into this game? No, you talking about about his grandpa? No, no. We, I mean, we've been dealing with that stuff all year, and so, uh, you know, it just there there wasn't anything I needed to say. He, uh, they all know how we feel and what we've done, and so there didn't need any, anything extra to be said. Coach, I was wrong. There's one one more. Okay. You've you've coached in that tournament now five times, and I'm wondering if does anything about this this two games spurt stand out or is different than the others well yeah what was different was playing in Dayton in the, in the, the first four that you know we've never done that before and get to play in Dayton with that crowd uh, you know is is I will say it's one of the highlights of my career for sure uh, just just it was a lot of fun and uh, you know to, to get to stay in it in advance and feel like you, you got to win and I understand it was against another 16 but it, it still felt incredible, and, and so that, that is something that will always stick out to me. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it.